Well, uh, good morning everyone. Um, welcome to this uh, briefing. Uh, today we're going to talk about the review that uh, Colin McDonald, the uh, government's uh, Chief Information Officer, led around the review of publicly accessible uh, systems. Um, the way we'd like to do the briefing is to take you through um, the, the high points of uh, the review and what it says, and then we'll open up for any questions uh, that you've got. Um, Colin will uh, handle most of the briefing, but I'll just say a couple of things um, by way of introduction. Um, the issue about uh, trust in government agencies to handle personal information, I think is one of the most important issues that faces us uh, as a state sector uh, going forward. Um, I think events of the last six months or so have shown that uh, the public are both uh, much more aware of inappropriate handling of the information by actually the private and public sector and are much less tolerant of uh, that kind of uh, uh, misuse of their information. So very much the message I think the public has sent us in the last uh, six months is that we need to raise our game considerably around how we handle people's information and that is a message uh, that I have taken on board very clearly and one I think is shared by uh, the leadership uh, of the public service. Uh, so this is part of uh, us raising our game in the handling of people's information. Uh, it's also uh, critical because of where the public service has to go. Today many New Zealanders are accessing uh, government services uh, via technology and particularly online technologies. <coughs> and many New Zealanders do that very successfully uh, and tell us through the surveys that they conduct that for a lot of services uh, that is a, a particular channel of choice that they like using and increasingly uh, want to use. So in the coming decade we will see more services uh, move uh, online and into di digital channels. To do that successfully though, we have to assure New Zealanders that uh, they can use that channel with confidence that their information will be appropriately handled. So getting on top of these issues now is critical not just to address uh, what I judge the public's mood at the moment, uh, but also to allow us to make the shifts in services uh, that we need as a public sector. Um, the context for this review uh, goes back to October uh, last year. As many of you will know, uh, uh, at, at that stage there was uh, a breach uh, in one of the MSD uh, kiosks. Uh, when that incident occurred, uh, I immediately uh, asked Colin McDonald to undertake a review to see if similar issues were present uh, in publicly accessible systems across the wider um, uh, state services. Uh, that review uh, was completed uh, by about Christmas uh, last year and uh, through the first months of this year uh, we have been preparing a, a package of responses uh, to that review. Uh, those have been approved by Cabinet and agencies are well underway uh, in responding to uh, our directions about how they need to change uh, their performance and call to take you through uh, the details uh, of that. Okay, thank you, Ian. Um, be before I go into the details, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about the context around managing information and, and privacy and security. Privacy and security around information is one of those jobs that will never be finished and it will never be completed because systems change uh, and needs change and requirements change and expectations of citizens change. So the security and privacy approaches that go around those systems have to also change. They have to keep up with and in many cases have to get ahead of those expectations and requirements. So there will always be a level of risk in this area that must be managed. Um, if, if we are to give access to citizen services in, in modern uh, online ways, then there are risks that must be managed. Um, it's quite clear, as Ian has said, that the public's expectation around privacy and security uh, is high, and it's important that the public service meets those high standards. 
The key findings of the review, um, and, and this review was a desk-based review where we looked at the approaches and the processes that were taken in agencies. How did they, how did they ensure that those systems they were deploying were, were secure? What approaches did they take? Now, the review has clearly shown that the management of privacy and information security uh, in public, uh, publicly accessible systems across the state sector is not always meeting best practice, and it needs to improve. Ensuring privacy and security of information has three lines of approach and three lines of defence. First and foremost, there is the good technical work that is done at the front line by our technical IT professionals and our IT vendors. Secondly, there is leadership oversight of that activity um, from senior management within agencies. And the third line of defence is independent quality assurance to make sure that you have done what you said you would do. And the review found that in many cases across the state sector, we are relying too heavily on one line of defence. <clears throat> we are relying too heavily on our IT professionals and our IT vendors. So many agencies need to make improvements in the way that they govern and oversee this activity. And the state sector is working hard as a result of this review to lift its game. So as you can see, the review found that many of the processes in agencies are underdeveloped. Many agencies had informal or undocumented processes and often relied on the skills and abilities of individual people. Now, as I've said, this is, this is important, but it's often not enough. Often these processes have grown up over time as expectations to get services online coming from citizens has increased. Then those processes have developed in line with those expectations. But we haven't necessarily stepped back and asked the question, are we doing all of the right things that we need to do? So in the face of those results, we've initiated a, a plan of action, and I'll talk about that shortly. We reviewed 215 systems. 203 of these systems were fine and needed no immediate action. However, within 12 agencies, we found some weak points that were identified in their security, and those weak points had to be addressed. There is, however, no evidence that those weak points had led to any security or privacy breaches. They were vulnerabilities that could be exposed by somebody making an attempt to access those systems um, inappropriately. So to use an analogy, it's a bit like a building that has locks on the windows, but the locks are perhaps not strong enough to resist the most determined attacker. So, so we found no open doors but we did find some areas that needed to be strengthened. We originally considered that there were 13 agencies <coughs> that had potential vulnerabilities, and in fact, one agency subsequently provided documentation to confirm that no, they were actually outside scope. So of the remaining 12 systems and the remaining 12 agencies, all of the issues that were identified have been addressed by those agencies. And as I say, there is no evidence that those potential vulnerabilities, those potential weak points, have led to any privacy breaches. A list of the agencies and the systems has been provided in your media pack. <clears throat> we will not be providing any more detail about the nature of those vulnerabilities because we do not think that it is wise to encourage people who may wish to try and broach these systems. So we will not be providing any more information. So as I mentioned earlier, a plan of action is already underway to address the issues that the review has identified. The plan is robust, it's certainly aggressive, and it will require concerted effort across the system. And it will require the attention of chief executives in all agencies. Um, and it will require support and help from the IT industry. So my team within the GCIO office have been providing guidance and advice to agencies, and we'll continue to do that. Um, and we'll be helping them and supporting them to comply with the requirements of this plan of action. In December, I submitted my report um, to Ian, a state services commissioner. And at that time, we asked all agencies to take immediate steps to ensure that their security and privacy processes were up to current standards. 
For example, we put in place um, a requirement that all new systems, before going live, had to have a privacy and security formal assessment. And that ongoing systems that were being developed needed a, an accreditation framework to make sure that best practice was being applied. In January, we discussed uh, and considered the report and prepared to take that report to Cabinet. And then in discussion with ministers, established the final plan. So by April, all agencies had to complete a risk assessment on their publicly accessible systems and then make a strategic choice as to whether they were going to continue to provide those services themselves or whether they were going to find another way of providing those services. For example, by using another agency or potentially outsourcing those systems. At this point, all agencies have now confirmed that risk assessment. They've completed the risk assessment and confirmed that for the time being, they are going to continue to operate these systems. By the end of July, agencies, all agencies will have to complete security testing for any systems that they consider to be high risk, publicly accessible systems. And they then need to provide me with a statement of their capability. What have they done and how have they done it? high level details of their ongoing improvement program and a confirmation that they've un undertaken all of the actions required of them and a plan to address any vulnerabilities that they might find. It's important to understand that agencies themselves have to determine which systems they consider to be high risk. The sort of thing that they're likely to take into account is the nature of the information that that system holds and the way that that system is used. That's why it's important that that's a decision for agencies and agency chief executives to make. By the end of September, <clears throat> I'll report to the State Services Commissioner and then to Ministers on the initial privacy and security improvements that have been made, and I'll then be reporting annually um, for the next two years on the ongoing improvements that are being made right across the system. And by the end of March 2014, all agencies will complete a security assessment of all other publicly accessible systems. And in terms of the overall response across government, we have established an information security and privacy governance group. And that group has been set up to make sure that the recommendations for the review, from the review are not just implemented, but in fact that they can be measured and that they can be sustained and that the privacy and security work across the system is well coordinated. Another role of that group is to ensure that our, our approach and our guidelines for agencies keep up to date with best practice. So we need to get up to best practice and we need to keep up to best practice. We're also establishing a panel of security and privacy experts and suppliers that agencies can draw on to ensure consistent quality uh, and, and best value for money. The State Service Commissioner has also reinforced public sector chief executives' responsibility for privacy and security within their own agencies and is, is in the process of updating performance agreements. And we have a privacy leadership group run out of Statistics New Zealand that are developing a toolkit which has now been, the initial program has now been launched uh, with agencies. An initial toolkit to make sure that best practice is being used across some of the other aspects of privacy and security. Because as I'm sure you're very aware, it's not simply about the technology. It's also about the practice. It's about the, 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 the policies that people have within their agencies, the training that they give their staff. <clears throat> In terms of email, as you're aware, there have been a number of, of privacy breaches based on usage of email. And all public service departments have reported on the actions that they are taking to reduce the likelihood of unintentional breaches through, through email. There's a number of things that agencies can do in this area and many of them have already implemented changes. So for example, many, are, many agencies are training their staff in the appropriate use of email to make sure that, that consideration um, is given uh, before, before documents are sent outside the agency. 
Many of them have also implemented automated checks, whereby uh, a, a, an extra question is asked before the email goes externally. A number of agencies have also disabled the autocomplete function to ensure that they have a, a better chance of making sure they're sending it to the right person. And a number of agencies have also looked at better ways of moving information around by sending links to documents rather than sending the documents themselves, which presents a further level um, and a further line of security. So just to close, um, it's very clear that we need to lift our game. The public expects, and quite rightly expects, that any information they give to government will be treated carefully uh, and it will be treated with, with respect. Citizens also want to be able to access services when it suits them, how it suits them. And so, so this is something that we simply have to get better at. This is not primarily a technology issue. This is primarily an issue of managing risks. And it needs the oversight and involvement of senior teams, chief executives within agencies to ensure that the right decisions are being taken and the right protections are put in place. We have a very clear picture of where we need to get to. We have a very clear plan to get there. And I'm confident that over the next two years, we will see significant improvement in the way privacy and security is managed across the state sector. Thanks, Colin. Questions? Is part of the problem that within any public sector, the people that are responsible for IT and security aren't actually members of the senior management team. They tend to be down the food chain as a group. I think the key issue is is the degree to which senior management are, are having clear oversight of the decisions that are being taken um, to, to decide how to protect those systems. So I, I don't think it's a question of where somebody reports, I think it's a question of the processes and procedures that they have in place to make sure that the right risk conversations are being had at a senior level. Do they, the senior management, do they actually understand <coughs> how these systems work and is that part of the problem? I don't think senior management need to understand how systems work. They need to understand what questions they need to ask. And they need to understand some of the basic principles of good security and good privacy. And then they're equipped to ask those questions. As I say, it's not a technical, it's primarily not a technical issue. It's primarily a risk management issue. And it's no different to any other form of risk management that you, that you need to have within an agency. Risk management around finance, risk management around health and safety. You don't necessarily need to be an expert in those fields, but you need to know what questions to ask. Several so, so times you've referred to some agencies have done this and some agencies have done that. It sounds like it's still very much an individual decision by the agency. To, to what extent is it possible to put security and privacy um, guidelines and even, um, and, and even standard software in place on an all of government basis? Um, well, I think that essentially the move that we are taking with the creation of the Government Chief Information Officer role and the mandate that that office is being given is a fundamental shift in how we want the system to work in that, you know, up until recent years individual agencies have a very high degree of autonomy around uh, systems, standards, uh, and there have been benefits from that. Uh, but increasingly, uh, as a system, uh, we are only as strong as our weakest link. And uh, that kind of approach is meaning that there will be uh, greater uh, system-directed uh, uh, standards and guidance. Um, going to the question uh, that was asked about CIO, it will also mean that increasingly the system will have a view around uh, where our senior leaders, whether they are senior managers or CIOs, are best placed in the system and the forthcoming changes to state sector legislation will give us a much uh, better ability to move uh, key people to uh, where they needed the right place at the right time in the right job and that's a recognition that uh, as a system we are going to have to be much more concerted and joined up 
on a whole set of issues. You're recognising, though, that that doesn't mean that all the decisions uh, that uh, need to be made in the system can happen at the centre. Fundamental will remain chief executive accountability. So going to the issues about email security, that's why the approach we've taken is to provide agencies with a very clear expectation that they need to lift their level of performance, that the GCIO has been able to offer those agencies a high degree of technical guidance and support about the ways in which they do that. Uh, but ultimately, the businesses in the state sector are highly diverse, and the right solution in one department will not be the right solution in another. And that means that senior teams and chief executives ultimately, and boards in the case of Crown Entities, still have the responsibility uh, to actually make good judgments about how they manage these issues. So, so you say that there are problems that happen with the chaos, then it's quite likely that all these systems would still be vulnerable. I think, I think uh, the way I'd, way I'd answer that is I think the MSD uh, incident was uh, precipitated us you know, looking at those issues. Uh, I suspect uh, because privacy was already, uh, as you recall, late last year coming up the agenda with, for example, the issues at ACC. Uh, I suspect uh, this kind of investigation you know, would have occurred. I think because of the issues at MSD, it probably happened earlier than it would otherwise have occurred. But it wasn't on a work plan? It, it wasn't at that point, uh, and that's what I'd say. I think it did uh, precipitate us to look at that issue in, a, in an earlier way than it would otherwise have occurred. Do you regret How much being more vigilant in that case? Oh, I think, I think in a sense, I think one of, one of you know, my, my regrets uh, is that I think uh, one of the things that struck me is that many more agencies are using te technology in different ways to deliver their services. And that has actually changed you know, quite quickly uh, in the state sector from you know, a time you know, five or ten years ago where technology was still you know, uh, at the heart of a, a relatively few number of agencies. But as you'll see from, the, the, for example, the 12 agencies that are listed, you know, there's quite a diverse set of agencies there. So there is an issue I think we are in a degree of uh, catch up. Um, and you know, I, I, you know, obviously with hindsight, we would like to have focused on this earlier. Uh, but now that we have had the incidents that we have, the challenge for us as a system is to up our game and to display a high degree of urgency uh, around that task, and that is what I believe we're doing. You said that there will always, you said that there will always be risks. Um, you said that there will always be risks, but you can't categorically assure people that their private information will be safe. You can never make that assurance, neither in the public sector nor the private sector. When you're handling information, unless you lock that information down and don't provide people with services, it's the only way you can guarantee. And no, we can't do that. It, that's just not feasible. So the issue is we have to ensure that we are managing that information in the best possible way to make sure that the, the privacy and security is, is high on the agendas of chief executives and senior teams within agencies as they continue to put more and more services online. It's not either or, it's, it's both. We have yeah. to achieve both. How much do you think that the year of the privacy breach, as the Privacy Commissioner called it, how much do you think that dented public confidence in government agencies in the public sector? Oh, it, it clearly hasn't been pu positive for public confidence. Uh, and that is why uh, I'm putting this issue high on the agenda for public service chief executives. It's why uh, I'm wanting to ensure that the GCIO is well placed to uh, fulfil his role in working on these issues because I think um, you know, the, the public are looking at the public sector and have seen a number of things happen that shouldn't have happened. Our response has to be saying, yes, we stick up our hands, we have to do better, and, and that's what we are doing. And you won't tell us um, much more about the nature of the, the issues with these 12 agencies, but I mean, this is Department of Corrections, Education, the EQC, Ministry of Justice. How significant are these vulnerabilities and should people be concerned? Well, well again, I think it's really important to remember that these are potential vulnerabilities the potential exposures. There's no evidence of any privacy breach here How with, significant any, with are those any of those systems. So, so there's a range of different 
there's a range of different issues there that had to be resolved. And, and we're not going to go into details because I do not want to encourage people to have a go at those systems. I think it would be inappropriate to do that. But what about the people whose information is held by these agencies and now you're coming out and saying there are weaknesses, there are vulnerabilities? Shouldn't they be given an assurance as to, you know, I mean, tell us how significant these vulnerabilities are? Well, I think the assurance that we can give them is that this has been focused on right across the public service. It's been put onto the top of the agenda of all public sector chief executives and a lot of energy and effort is going in to ensure that people can feel confident that we are looking after their information in an appropriate way. You is say the that these damages, the, these breaches have been damaging. In what way are people changing their behaviour? Are they not giving their information to government departments? Look, I'm, I'm not getting uh, any hard evidence um, that that is happening, certainly not, not happening on a, a, a widespread uh, extent. Uh, my starting point is, if, if you look at state sectors around the world, uh, the New Zealand state sector is uh, one of the most trusted, and the whole range of surveys uh, show that. Uh, ultimately, if we are to do our job in delivering services to the public, the public have to trust us in, to do that. And uh, one of the key issues about maintaining trust going forward is that people have confidence that the information uh, that they provide to government is going to be handled uh, appropriately. So from my point of view, uh, my sense, you know, anecdotally, is uh, the public haven't been impressed uh, with what they've seen, and, and I think they're right to have that view. And, and I want to act uh, now on those issues to stop us being in a situation in three or four years' time when people are showing a real reticence to provide the, the government with information or to share information, uh, uh, because at the end of the day, information is one of the key assets that government has to do its job effectively. I want us collectively to be able to do our job more effectively, and if we're going to be able to do that, uh, the people have to trust us. So this is a fundamental issue for us to show that we are registering it as a serious issue and to have demonstrated uh, progress around dealing with this as an issue. So these the are focus is, on these has on been publicly on publicly accessible systems, but are the precautions, you've, the measures you're putting in place now, are they deliberately um, arranged to, to, to go further than that? Um, or is the focus still still tightly on the systems that uh, are actually meant to be publicly accessible? Has, I think has broader work been done, yeah. or will broader work be done, be done on other aspects of government systems? First and foremost, we're focusing on publicly accessible systems, and the action plan uh, is focusing on, on driving up the standards that, that surround those systems. Inevitably, though, those standards will start to apply to all other systems that agencies deploy within their own within their own agencies. And in fact, many of the same techniques and methods around risk management, risk assessment, um, are absolutely applicable. Uh, and I would expect that agencies will start to use those right across the board. But right now, the focus is on publicly accessible systems, and then we will move more broadly than that um, over the coming period. What kind what of websites were the prisoners, the inmates at Mount Eden Prison, prison able to access from there? From I, I don't have that information. You would need to you would need to ask um, the department. Do you know how many uh, computers like that there are in prisons? Again, you need to refer that to the department. My focus was on whether there was a vulnerability in the way that it had been what, set up. What, what would be what would be wrong with issuing a general? directive to say, for example, you shall not use autocomplete on emails. Why do you have to rely on the individual uh, chief executives to make that decision? Again, all, all computer systems are in place to try and allow us to do our jobs in an efficient and an effective way and to provide services. So making a decision at the centre, as Ian has already said, we, we, we have a very disparate a set of services that we provide to citizens <coughs> and agencies are very different so the risks are different within agencies. I think it's quite dangerous to sit at the centre 
uh, and set absolute standards for everyone, um, rather than have chief executives make active decisions about how they are going to manage those risks within their agencies. It's their best place to make that decision. Mr McDonald, can you offer any assurance that these prisoners in Nigeria will Websites with child pornography. <coughs> Again, I'd like I'd like to ask you to refer that question to the department. I don't have those details. Do you know how long the loophole was open that they were able to access external websites? We simply looked at the, the what we found during the course of the review. Again, you'll have to refer that to the department. So how are these twelve open, uh, twelve sort of unsecured windows or inappropriately yeah. locked windows that you mentioned? I mean, there did seem to be problems across, you know, pretty much all of the agencies that you talked to were failing to meet the target, the exact targets of the project and the way that these things are being done. I mean, most of them had insufficient security. How disappointing is that? Remember, this is measured against best practice. What we did was measure them against best practice. And, and you're right. A, a number of agencies did not meet best practice. And, and there's, there's a variety in there. Some agencies are are right up there um, deploying best practice. Some are. But how disappointed were you as, as GCIO to, to find that that was the case? Well, I think in terms of where the public sector needs to go, um, in terms of the sorts of services, the, the, the way the public wants to access its information, it's quite clear we have to lift our game and we have to get better. So, so, so it just simply has to improve. In your view, is there a systemic issue with uh, IT security and the public service? There's a lot of political debate about that. In your view, do you think there is a systemic, a systemic problem? I think what we've seen is a number of agencies not deploying best practice, relying on the, 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 the good work of their technical people, relying on the good work of IT vendors, and not having the right level of leadership management oversight. That, that to me, is the fundamental issue here. So would you label that a systemic problem? The way, the way, I, the way I'd frame it is... Uh, I think because of where we're at and where we need to go, the level of performance in the system as a whole around information management, information security, is a much higher level of performance uh, than we thought about, say, three or five years ago. So this is an issue about moving the whole system up in terms of its level of uh, performance and that is what we're in the process of doing. So it's a systemic, systemic problem. Well, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, the way, the way I'd say it is there's, there's a need for the system to perform uh, differently and that, that shift in performance is going to have to be seen right across uh, the system. Uh, the bar has been raised uh, and that is being raised right across uh, the system. So this is not just an issue for two or three agencies because of the pervasive uh, nature of technology in the way the public sector will work in the future. This has to be an issue for the system as a whole. So the sense of basically fails to keep up. Well, it's a sense of, I mean, it's a sense of, it's, it's, it's a, what I'm saying is the system has to perform differently and we're not where we need to be as a system. So you don't want to use the word systemic failure, the words? Well, because in, in, in a sense, I think, uh, and I'm not being cute here, I do think, in a sense, the system, uh, people have operated the system with degree of focus uh, that they thought was appropriate for their businesses. And what I'm saying now is what I think we've seen from this review. There is a very big gap between, in general, that level of performance and what is best practice. And because of both public concern around these issues and, importantly, how we want services to change in the public sector, the level of performance that the system needs to exhibit in this area has to be much greater in the future than in the past. So um, I don't think the word systemic failure in a sense is, is that helpful in this context. What we're saying is collectively we need to raise the game because of where we are and where we need to go. So the system is relaxing, perhaps? I, I think the this, you know, within the system, there are always judgments that you're making about the degree of risk that you take in operating your business. And you have to make judgments about where you focus your risks, where you take 
your risks because um, we're in a world where there is limited capacity for, for any senior team to focus, there are limited resources, uh, there's limited capabilities. You're always making a judgment about the degree of, of risk and focus that you put on operations in your business. And that, that is always going to be the case. What the issue is, I think we're saying, is in a number of issue, a number of agencies, as Colin said, we have relied too heavily on the first line of defence as opposed to all three lines in defence. And people have you know, made those judgments. What we're saying now is that's not an appropriate place for us to be going forward. And therefore we are wanting much more concerted and much more consistent focus around information management and information security in the public sector as a whole. But the, the sector is like to across... Do, Mr McDonald, do you think you've got enough resources? Do you have, are you, do you work on your own? Do you, do you have enough support to be able to tackle the work that you're going to be doing? No, I'm, I run a large department um, and I've organised my leadership team to make sure we've got a great deal of focus on this area. So I have a whole branch within the department that, that helps in this area. And, uh, and uh, what, it, what it'd say is the, the creation of the GCIO is, is, I think, a fundamental way in which our system can perform differently. We're putting a lot of focus in supporting Colin and his team that they have uh, the right degree of mandate, the right degree of resourcing, and the appropriate focus that they can do their job uh, successfully. So supporting Colin is a really key uh, priority uh, for me. Uh, I don't want to overlook though uh, what I said earlier is in addition to the role of GCIO, uh, we do need to remember that the prime accountability uh, does lie with chief executives in individual agencies. It does lie with boards of Crown entities in the Crown entity sector. And in parallel with the development of the GCIO's role, uh, we will be using the new tools that uh, are coming up in the state sector legislation currently in the Parliament to make sure that agencies have uh, the appropriate uh, people capability, capacity and training to do their side of the bargain much more effectively as possible. So this is not just an issue for the GCIO, it's an issue for every chief executive in the agency uh, where they are using technology to deliver uh, services. And well, so really that being the case, I mean, will you then, if there are in the future major privacy breaches because the work done by Mr McDonald and team hasn't been carried out properly, will you be seeking accountability from those chief executives? Yeah, the, as, as Colin said in his presentation, uh, uh, what I've done is to make very clear in the standard expectations for chief executives that uh, focus around uh, uh, information management, information security, is is one of the, the critical standard uh, expectations for for any chief executive. Uh, and obviously, uh, if if performance is uh, not up to that standard, uh, there will be an appropriate account accountability. Depending on, you know, you look at it in, in a case by case situation and look at what is the particular issue. Uh, but you know, every chief executive, certainly in the, in the public service, is uh, under no illusion uh, that this is a really important part of their job and uh, a much more important uh, part of their job than they probably thought 12 or 18 months ago. Will there be this a financial cost to implementing change? Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't know the answer to that uh, in detail. Uh, there will be a cost. I think it will differ from agency uh, to agency. Uh, but I come back to the point about uh, the public sector's licence to operate in the future um, will require us to be performing well uh, in this regard. So I think that the costs that are involved, whether they are training or, or systems or capability, Look, they're just going to have to be a cost of doing business in our world going forward. It's not a, it's not a question of uh, uh, a nice, a nice to do. It's, it's a really 
you know, a, a critical part of a successful organisation in the public sector. So Mr. Regional uh, this, yeah, this review is focused on publicly accessible systems, but obviously some of the privacy breaches over the last year or so have not involved, well, not yeah. intentionally publicly accessible systems. Are you going to do further work on the wider IT sector within the public sector, or do you think uh, the issues identified here will form uh, a wider? They certainly, they, I mean, it, it is part of, you're, you're right, I mean, we, um, when the issue with MSD's kiosks came up, we did uh, an exercise that was deliberately confined to publicly accessible systems because we wanted to get a handle relatively quickly around whether there were um, uh, system-wide issues uh, around those systems more generally. And I don't, I don't, I'm not particularly apologetic that uh, that work was quite focused because I did want to understand whether we had an issue there. Um, the work program though that has been um, uh, approved by Cabinet and uh, uh, does envisage you know, a wider view around uh, privacy and information security across you know, a wider group of systems. So you know, this, this is, uh, you know, I don't want anyone to be under any illusion that we are just focused around this category uh, of, of systems. As I said, you know, subsequent to this review, we've, we've uh, done some more work around uh, the use of email in, in the public sector. Uh, and uh, you know, over the next two years, uh, you'll be seeing a, a systematic program that will be seeking to uh, assess and lift our level of performance across information security more generally. So at this point, you don't see the need for a, a wider review? Well, I think the, the, the governance mechanism that's, that was set up uh, out of the Cabinet agenda does actually give uh, a wider view and under Collins' leadership he will be taking a broader view of these issues over the next uh, two years. So, so just coming back to cost, are we talking millions to fix the problem? Uh, look, uh, as I said, I don't, I don't have a clear view around um, what those costs are it, it around the idea. system. Look, I don't want to. I don't want to speculate because I don't. I don't know. So you know, I, I don't want to mislead by saying it's it's in this order of magnitude. What I'm saying is, uh, any public sector organisation, uh, as you operate, you there are costs that you you incur uh, to have that license to operate, and that's just going to be one of the costs. Uh, the agencies are going to face in operating in the world that we're going into. Can, can, can I just make a point on that as well, though? If you, if, you, if you go back to the fundamental finding of the review, mm -hmm. the fundamental finding of the review was that we were using one line of defence and we need to deploy all three lines of defence. The other two lines of defence are um, management oversight and independent assurance. So, so I think it's important to keep it in that context that those are the changes that we're likely to see is a higher level of management oversight uh, and a higher level of, of independent quality assurance. We're not necessarily going to see a huge investment in, in, in physical security techniques around yeah. IT systems. We are going to see a much higher focus from chief executives and from senior teams and much better independent assurance that all of those things have been done appropriately. Which, which should have been there in the first place, shouldn't it? Given the world that we are now operating in, best practice would have all of those things in place right now. And, and our very clear plan is to get those in place as quickly as possible. How much did the review cost and how much has it taken to fix the problems that have been identified? I don't have those figures. Um, I, I, I can find you the cost of the review, um, but I don't have figures for what um, for what agencies have spent to, to come up to this point. Can you please explain, please? Can you Sorry, please explain, that. thank you, Ms. Murray, uh, the limitations? It says here that you're, you're not able to test whether the controls are actually effective. What does that mean unless the agencies themselves self-assess? Well, <coughs> what we did um, what we did was a, what's effectively a desk-based review. So we reviewed the policies and 